Good evening everyone, Biochemistry Simplified. After finishing with carbohydrates, we are going to start on another biomolecule, proteins. Before we start on proteins, we have to understand the amino acids. Just the same way I said that for you to understand carbohydrates, we have to do much on the monosaccharides, which we are building on the disaccharides, and further building on the polysaccharides. So for the proteins, we are going to look at the amino acids at the building block. I said that biochemistry involves chemistry of life. But if you talk about the chemistry of life, the building blocks contribute much to all this. Just as you also build a house, you know, you have to start with stones and you have to bring all the bricks together until you have the big house. But it will take time as you keep on building. So we start with the monosaccharides, we'll build the disaccharides, which further build the whole thing called carbohydrates. So for today, we are going to start by looking at amino acids. And if you look at the structure of the amino acid, aside of the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which was already seen in the carbohydrate, we are going to see another component of a nitrogen. On the R side chain, we are going to see a component of a sulfur. So we are introducing another element aside of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We are going to see nitrogen as well as the sulfurs. So they always exist more than 300 amino acids in nature, but only 20 serve as building blocks of proteins. So we are going to look at the 20 amino acids based on their structures, based on their one letter code, based on their full names, and the three letter codes. So the 20 amino acids are what makes us who we are. What we mean by what makes us who we are is it starts from the DNA synthesis, the replication process. Then it translates to transcription. At the point it translates to transcription, the messenger RNA carrying the codon after the post-transcriptional modification, it will move to translation process or the synthesis of proteins. And at that point, the messenger RNA carries the codon. The codon at three bases, which translate to an amino acid. We have a linear chain of the amino acid forming a polypeptide which will further be forming a protein. So it will make us whoever we are, because in genetics we always refer to it as behind every phenotype, there is a genotype which underlies it. If you see a physical expression, there is a gene which was responsible for it. So at the time you are seeing the physical expression of the phenotype, that is the gene product, the protein itself. So as much as you can see, the color of the skin, that is a phenotype. But there is a gene which underlies it. So it has to start with the DNA synthesis. So the central dogma theory applies here. So for us to see the property of a protein, it means the amino acid component matters too much. It is the one which explains much on how a protein behaves or it will determine much of the physical and chemical properties of any of those proteins. So for us to understand the proteins, we'll have to understand the 20 amino acids first. Because even if you look at the structure of a protein, the primary structure are the 20 amino acids uh, arranged in a linear order with a peptide bond attached to each one of them. So in this case, let us dive into amino acids when we look at the chemical nature of amino acids. So if you look at the structure down here, it shows how an amino acid looks like generally. So it has a carboxyl terminal end, the COOH, to the right hand side, the amino group NH2 or NH3 plus, to the left hand side, you have the alpha carbon or the central carbon, you have a hydrogen up here. The R side chain, the R, is the side chain. It is what gives the amino acids the physical and chemical properties. So they are carboxylic acid containing an amino group. We talk about carboxylic acid because you have a carboxyl terminal end, you have amino terminal end this side, but then there is a hydrogen, an alpha carbon, and then 
we have the R side chain. So generally, all amino acids, the structure, this will look the same. The difference will just lie on the R side chain. Classification of these as amino acids, the classification is based much on the variability of the R side chain. So they are going to be classified based on the ring structure present. There are several classifications which you are going to look at, but this, based on the ring structure, we are going to structurally classify these amino acids into seven classes. So we are going to look at the aliphatic amino acids, the aromatic amino acids, the acidic amino acids, and the amide of acidic, the sulfur containing, the alcohol, and the basic amino acids. So we are classifying them based on the side chain. The side chain is this one. If I go back, side chain, the R, which was showing, the R side chain. We are classifying them.